Hello, 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 hello. Wherever you happen to be located on this lush planet we call Earth. I hope you're having a sweet day or night wherever you're located. Welcome to my 3D channel. In this case, as you can see, the biggest day, I'm using Blender. To be exact, I'm using Blender version 3.1. My topic for the day is something that will affect all 3D artists when you start using those notes like I have. Sometimes you will either want to use the bump node or the displacement node. As the bump node implies, it doesn't give a little tweak of uh, 3D realism. While the displacement, you can add as much uh, 3D element as you want to it. So let's jump right in. Let's see. Well, let me go back to my layout. Let me bring up my plane. Then when I made this, I made this figure actually in my node editor in Blender. And then I decided to use my snipping tool on Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever reason. I didn't want to use this, the tried and true method that the people always use on videos, using the brick texture. What happened if I want to give my own texture a butt map? That's what I want to do. I don't want to always give a brick or a wall that somebody else made. I want to give my own things that I make a texture. And I have a simple illustration here. And we're going to simply add some bump map to it and a displacement to it. Now, we will jump in. And let me start off by using the easier of the two. Which is the bump map. So I've got my little node set up here. Don't have to go over it. So I'm going to go to uh, add converter. I'm sorry, vector bump. The bump map is the easiest one to use. I guess I should come up here with my. Uh, I use the. I use my um my color ramp. Going to the hikes. I'm going to give it some 3D elements to it. 3D elements got less width which is 2d and the height the height is a 2d element so i hook it up there now you see i got normal and i'm gonna connect it to the normal and my principal bsdf and we see right there it looks a little bit more like i got some substance to it but the good thing about it is non-destructive so if we go back here Let's go my my my, my regular three D port. See, it's, it didn't destroy it. It didn't affect it any. I go back to my shade. Click on my on my shader. And the thing, like I said, now now the bump only works if you're looking at it. If I look at it from the side, I don't see no bump or no displacement at all. That's when the displacement modifier come in to make it look it's like it did something from the side. But the bump, it do like it got some bump to it. And a lot of people do like bump. It gave it a little bit of realism. My default one, let's see, let's go back, let's put it as the strength of zero. zero. You see, there's my default. You got a lot of gray in here, a lot of gray. And you see, I got some black, so I made sure that some grays, brown degrees of grays, and brown degrees of black. And I, I increased my strength up a little bit more. You see, it's rising up, it looks bumpy. So that's when you know it's definitely got a lot of different grays in there. But now, like I said. With the uh bump, and they're gonna get to a certain height, and that's it, it ain't gonna go no more. That's it for the bump map. So I don't have to do no more for the bump map, so I can, I can delete it now. Now, here come from the true beast the displacement. Before I go over to that, I want to go over something first. Let me zoom in when you use the displacement. It's experimental in cycles. It's experimental. Let me go what experimental means in Blender. I'm going to read a verbatim. Experimental features are disabled, hidden by default. Oh, why are they doing that? But can be enabled by setting features set to experimental 
and their renders properties, which we will do shortly. Enabling the experimental feature set will use experimental and incomplete features that might be broken or changed in the future. So we got that people as experimental, it can be broken, and it may not work. For me, it didn't work. But I'm just going to go through the whole steps that I learned from YouTube videos. It worked on every YouTube video, but for me, it's not working. But I think I know why it may not be working for me. This is why, and if it don't, somebody can help me and explain it. It may not be working for me because, as I said earlier, I did not use a texture made from somebody else. I don't know if they put a little bit of pizzazz into when they make the texture. All I did was make this in the vendor shader. I used a snipping tool and I saved the pictures. So I don't know if that's that's it. But I do got black, white, and gray stuff in there. But hey, and we see that it did work with the bump map. So if it worked with the bump map, why shouldn't it work with the normal displacement map? Okay, but so let's go to displacement. Let's go back to my shaders. We just drop it in. Let's go to add vector displacement. Let's hook it up. I'm going to take my color, put it in height. And then this is the only time you may ever if you'd have to use the output node, material output node much. I have to take my displacement socket and put it right in here with displacement. I learned that a lot in watching more videos. Now it got that look as the bump map. So remember that displacement and the default will give you the look of a bump map. But now let's go to the definition of an experimental. We gotta go set it up now. So let's go to our rendering button. Click on render. It must be in cycles. In cycles, the feature set is not supported. I have to go to experimental. That's that right there. The next. You have to come down here to material output. We have to go to the settings section. Settings. It said displacement. Right now it said bump only, which is showing up here for the bump. I want to put it in. You can put it in displacement only, or I'll put it in displacement and bump. Okay, let's see what happened. Now let me go up here and see. Let me move these switches and see what happened, people. It didn't work earlier. See, it's not working. And if I bring it down to zero, it works. But it only takes up to the displacement mode. So if I change this no mid-level, nothing happens. So if I did something wrong, somebody please let me know. Because it, it gave me hell to try to figure this out. I couldn't get it to work the displacement mode. But remember, it's experimental. That could be why. But I'm open to any suggestion that you may have out there. Okay, I'm done with this note. So I'm going to do it the, the method that I, it always worked. I'm going to go right to the modifier stack. It always worked there. So, step one. Now, we want to know this that material. But I need a texture. Click on texture. I'm going to click on this right here for image. Choose bump. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's working already. Let me click on it, make sure I got a lot of subdivision. It should have subdivision in there. Oh, but I had it set up. I, I, I want to do it from scratch, people. I took that off. Let me click on it. Let me go to edit mode. I need. Now, whether you're in using, if the displacement node work good, if you got to use the displacement modifier like I'm going to do, both displacement node and displacement modifier they need to have the surface subdivided a lot of people on youtube you think you use a subdivision surface modifier but hey i just like to do the subdivision by hand like i did right here all right so we got it set up now i can go back to object mode i can go down click on here my, my um texture hit new Go down to image, click on bump map, and it's working. Let's go back to the modifier. Let me take off this modifier. Let's go through the. I'm gonna click on my modifier. So if I click on my strength, see it's like that. It's not working the way we want. See, I have to add a new modifier. Let me. I'm gonna keep clicking off. Click clicking. Add a new modifier. I'm gonna put the displace modifier. 
Okay, so it's still not the way I want. So I'm gonna go back to here and click on this texture again. See, when I did that, I gotta put a new texture there. I think when you have the texture, it may give it a space automatically, but I don't know. Let me choose my image. I did that. Let me go to the modifier. Okay, it's working. And it's working the way I want. I'm going to put it back to zero. Put it back to zero and I'm explaining. it. Zero. See, here's my blacks. My blacks where my mouse at. Now, with the special modifier, the black should be sucked inward. I can make it reverse, but if you know, for the most part, I'm going to suck the black inward, and I'm going to push the whites outward. Let's see what happened when I did that, when I gave it the, uh... Now, if I make it... Now, the displacement can also get to the level of the, um... The bump map, if you want to. I'm going to give it one-tenth. See? One-tenth. Change it just slightly. You see, it's sort of bumpy. Two temps, and unlike and you see now, unlike the um the bump map, it is changing the actual geometry. So displacement, whether you because I saw it on the videos, whether displacement inside the node or the displacement with the, with the modifier, the displacement it will destroy your geometry. But I'm since I didn't apply my modifier yet, I can turn it off. Let me see. Let me turn off my modifier. Yeah, so it's not destructive, destructive. I can delete it. I didn't apply nothing yet. So we see what the uh, geometry, the special node is doing. I'm going to pick up the 5 tenths. And then, see, look at that. Right? When I give it the positive numbers, my blacks get pushed in. I'm sorry, and my white come out. As you can see right here, the blacks are at the bottom. Now, if I want to make it reverse, I just can put a negative number in there. I put negative. Five tenths. You see, now the blacks have been pushed out, and the white is gone inward. That's with the negative numbers. But you know, for the most part, we like to keep it positive. So I put, I put one, and that made a big change. Now I was moving around. I was messing around with this earlier. See, here's the good thing about the now. If I was using the node, this is all I can do. But since I'm using the modifier, I can do other things to it. Watch this. I can choose direction, X. Do you see that? A, a unique different look. I can choose Y. You cannot do this inside with the um the node. Then I can choose uh Z. Let's put it back the way it was, because you know it's based on normals. And then I can just choose you know, custom normal, RGB, custom, RGB. See, that did something like that. So, now, if you use a modifier, you can do more with it. You can make more exotic scenes or whatever. I'm just going to put it back to normal, like it was before. What happened if I put it on local coordinates? Global. See, look at that. I put it on global. Change happened. Object, more change happened, and you read nothing happened. So I put it back on local, what it was before. But we see people now. If you use the modifier, you can do more with it. If I let's go back and use the uh, the displacement node. For me, all it has gave me was basically. All it basically gave me was just uh, the bump map. But if you use a displacement modifier, you see I was able to change the X, the Y, and the Z, the local, the global, etc. So you probably can do more if you go to the modifiers. And remember, modifiers are not experimental. See here, if I use the node, the displacement node is experimental. But it definitely works. With the tried and true blender method of using that displacement node. So I hope this helped you all out. I understand how to use displacement nodes and a displacement modifier to give your shaders more of a pizzazz. 
I just stick with black and white. And yeah, I forgot. The bump and the displacement, they love to deal with the black and white color. You know, I can add more colors to the color ramp later. Let me see right now if I, I want to add some color to my color ramp. I can still get my color ramp some color. Let me click on black. I want to get black to color blue. See? I can still add color to it. I get white to color green. Oh, I should say red. That makes me see. I can still give my so you're not stuck with just black now and white, but the color ramp. I'm sorry, but the um, but the R, but those, yeah, but the um, the bump map and the displacement since I'm using this gray socket. The gray socket that's basically black and white colors, you know, from zero to one. But I can still do things with my um with my um color ramp if I want to. So thank you for stopping by. To the new users, please don't stop. Keep pushing forward. Keep learning every day. Never retreat. Never back up. Keep pushing forward. Keep learning. Keep striving every day. Till next time for the family, to the family, I hope you learned something new. Peace.